I'm pregnant. Hey guys, so today is April 28th and today is going to be my 34 week update. Um, <laughs> once again, just because I suck, I skipped 33 weeks, so, and basically nothing's changed. Um, I didn't have a doctor's appointment last week, I actually had one today. So, went to that, and it wasn't just a regular appointment, um, I had an ultrasound done, so I had pictures, and basically a lot that we talked about. Um, to start off with, we'll talk about the ultrasound. Everything looked good. Um, the heartbeat was good. The fluid was good. The growth was good. It was actually really surprising. Um, the baby is measuring in the 81st percentile, so they're estimating her weight to be over six pounds already, which is kind of um, <laughs> kind of scary. And I'm, I'm trying to take it with a grain of salt because, for one, um, Abriel this. Things are sort of playing out like they did in my first pregnancy, um, sort of, except for the fact that I've had, I've, I've been, like, things were already starting to go wrong by this point, um, when I was pregnant with Abriel. So, that's different, um, but Abriel did start up, it start out way higher up in growth percentiles, and she quit growing. So, you know, that's always kind of in the back of my mind is a fear that I know, you know, it can happen, things can change. But right now, everything looks good. Um, and they actually, they were estimating Abrielle was supposed to have been a really big baby, too. They were telling me she was going to be like 10 pounds and stuff, and she wasn't. Um, she wasn't even how much they estimated her. The last ultrasound I had with her, I think they estimated her to be at like 6 pounds and something odd ounces and she was like a pound less than that she was 513 so I was really I don't know um I guess surprised I don't, I don't really even I don't know I was so dubbed up during the surgery and stuff and afterwards I don't remember like the whole part I just remember bits and pieces so some things aren't really super clear um but I do remember being really surprised when they told me she was that little. So, I'm going to take it with a grain of salt and say that this may be a big baby. Mm, she may not be. Um, she may be just be average. She may be small like Abrielle. I don't know yet. We'll see. But, everything looked good. Fluid was good. My fluid actually was kind of high, I guess, for me. Um, it's the highest it's been this pregnancy. And the highest that it, it was never, ever... My fluid was low or just average throughout my pregnancy with Abriel, but this fluid was actually high. I think Angie told me it measured in at a 20 or something like that. So anyway, everything looked good. Um, baby moved. Everything was seen. Everything's in the right place, the right size. Da 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 da. No worries. And I have pictures that I'm going to show you guys. So here we go. Little profiles. And, um, as soon as I got done with the ultrasound and went and, you know, did all the normal blood pressure, pee in the cup type stuff, and, and she came in the room, she, one of the first questions she asked was, does this baby on the ultrasounds look anything like Abrielle? And it really kind of took me by surprise, because I hadn't expected anyone to ask me that. So, I dug out Abrielle's ultrasound pictures. And I started going through them and trying to find one that was like close in the same gestational age as this. And this is 34 weeks, 5 days. This is 35 weeks and 2 days. So, you know, top obviously is the ones that you can compare. Um, their hands are kind of in a different position but kind of similar. Their facial expressions are totally different. Abrielle is doing like a duck face, and this baby honestly kind of looks like she's laughing or smiling. So, I don't know whether they look the same profile-wise on the ultrasound to me. I really can't tell. I really don't know what I think um, about that. Because even when I look at Abrielle, I can't see like me or Sam in her. I just see her. So, moving on. Like I said, everything went good, golden, beautiful, perfect, you know, textbook, um, doctor's appointment, so that's good. 
and next week's doctor appointment is going to be Monday. So I'll probably start doing updates on like Mondays, maybe Tuesdays. Um, I don't know. I probably shouldn't say I'll start doing them any certain day. So anyway, next week is going to be the Group B strep test. Um, they'll do the third trimester HIV blood test, just routine test. I'm gonna have a bunch of blood drawn for some, you know, just simple routine, no big deal kind of stuff. Um, and what else are they doing? Oh, I fill out a form next week to, I don't, I, Angie said she doesn't know how it works, that it's a new thing that they're doing, um, and she's, so far, she's not had any patients, like, go all the way through it, pretty much everyone that's starting to do it is in the same place as me, pretty much, um, but I'm going to fill out paperwork to get my insurance company to um, buy a breast pump for me so we'll see how that all goes and that's that's pretty much it um I have to <laughs> I'm actually really behind on this I was supposed to have made this like 10 weeks ago and I forgot about it partly because um nobody gave me a piece of paper with the reminder thing that and I have thought well, part of it is optional, considering I'm not a first-time mom, but I thought that I didn't, I don't, I don't know what happened, but we had a miscommunication. So I have got to make my pre, I don't know what you call it, like where you go to the hospital and you fill out all the paperwork and you get registered. That way when you go in, you don't have to worry about any of that then. So I've got to do my pre-registration or whatever, I don't know. And I'm going to make that appointment and do it here soon, considering Wednesday I am 35 weeks, so I'm almost at full term. And me and Angie did kind of throw the VBAC thing back on the table. Because I got told at first that if, um, and this is like all conflict and stuff, I got told, you know, at first that... Oh, if you go into labor, like, as long as you're full term, but it's before your C-section date, they'll have to do the C-section anyway. And then I got told, no, they won't, um, not unless you're 39 weeks because of uh, developmental risk issues with their lungs and stuff. And now I'm being told that um, if I go into labor, as long as I'm considered full term, they will either go ahead and do the C-section or I can try for a VBAC. So I'm really confused as to what's going to happen. And I think part of it is going to be basically in that um, hypothetical situation that I go into labor before the date of my C-section and da 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 da. I think it's going to kind of depend on who is on call and what they're actually going to let me do. So I'm not making any plans. Um, I think I'm going to go into this really mostly planning for the surgical delivery just because labor is not a guaranteed thing. I have no idea um, who will be on call if that were to happen. I have no idea what they what, what they would say, what they would do. Um, I know Peters is just really, you know, Angie says, well, you know, you can always change your mind and do the VBAC um, and try that if you want to try. And Peters is just really, you know, let's, let's be on the safe side and do the c-section and I really don't know how I feel anymore like I keep flip-flopping about it I have mixed feelings um sometimes I don't want the c-section at all sometimes I get really scared of it and I don't think it's so much as I'm scared of the surgery um itself or something bad happening to me or you know some something like that I'm just mostly scared about the recovery afterwards and how much pain I know I'm going to be in and the fact that I'm only going to have Sam for a few days and um, you know, my mother-in-law, she's got, her schedule is about to be changing so she's not really available to help me. My mom only has a limited time that she can take off work to come and stay with me and the girls for a while right after Sam ships out so it's... I think that's partly, well, no, I know that is my main stressor in all of this is the whole, what am I going to do if I come home from the C-section and I only have Sam for a few days and then I only have my mom for a couple weeks 
and then I'm on my own before I've even been given the okay that I can even lift Abrielle up out of her crib or put her in the high chair or get her in and out of the bathtub or do anything that I need to do to take care of her. So that's definitely a scary thought. Um, and then with the VBAC, I have fears and mixed feelings about that because you know, I didn't go into labor at all with Abrielle. I, I never got that far. It never happened, so I don't know what to expect. Um, it would basically be my first time laboring, so I'm afraid that because it would be my first time, it would take longer and they would rush to the decision of a C-section and then I would have went through all that for nothing because I'm, I want to say I'm confident about this, but if I ended up going into labor and did the VBAC route, I think I would want to do it drug free. Um, I think I would just because I know that the more intervention I have, the more likely I'm going to end up on that table. So I just, I have so many mixed feelings about it. I feel like in ways that I'm going to wind up in the same spot no matter what I do that anything I try or anything I want to try, I'm still going to end up on that table. I don't know. So I guess I'm just going to plan for the surgical because that's more than likely what's going to happen. And any <laughs> feelings that I have about it, I'm just going to have to deal with them. Okay, so symptoms for this week, lots of heartburn. Oh my gosh, heartburn so bad. Um, so bad that I can't even take Tums and it helped. Like I just throw the Tums up. So the heartburn is very painful, obviously. Um, and it in turn leads to vomiting, which is even more painful, and then in turn aggravates uh, the heartburn, and the, uh, it's just a vicious cycle. It's horrible. Um, <laughs> my back hurts pretty bad. My boobs hurt so bad. They're so swollen and so tender. And, like, my nipples have, I, I feel like somebody colored them with a brown marker. They're so dark now. Um. I'm leaking colostrum. I've been leaking colostrum for a while now. And like my nipples are dry, so I've been already putting like lanolin on them because I'm like, oh no, you know, this is this is way too early for that stuff to start. Um, other than that, I just feel pain. Um, and it's you know, like sitting up like now and standing and walking around. I'm mostly good, but when it comes to nighttime, I'm not sleeping well at all. Um, I have a hard time getting to sleep. I have to wake up several times to go to the bathroom to pee, and I just, my belly hurts. I can't get comfortable. I feel so heavy. <laughs> and my husband is a bed hog, cover hog, pillow hog. He's just a hog when it comes to the bedroom. <laughs> So I have to, like, try to find a way to lay comfortably and fight for my share of the blanket or the pillows or even the bed itself. So it's really difficult to do. So sleeping is just becoming blah. But I think that is, that's pretty much it. That's it. This is all over the place. Um, I guess that's another thing you could add is pregnancy brain like I can't stay focused it seems like I I jump from one thing to the other and I can't keep my mind in the same place for long enough to finish what I'm doing or what I'm saying before I'm moving on to something else so I will show you guys my belly and that would be it